Hi, I'm Keith with Danfoss Food Retail Controls, and today's video will be on the USB when it's inserted into the system manager and all the functionality associated with it. So whenever we're going to be using this USB, if you are not authorized, in other words, if you don't have the login credentials, you're not able to use this USB. So you have to ahead of time know if you are authorized or not and or have the login uh, authorization uh, and uh, password as our default one, two, three, four, five. That allowed me in and now as we can see, we have a pop-up window which allows me access to using this USB. Uh, in this particular control, we can see there's a fair amount of alarm activity, the red uh, that's shown on the screen. Just know that this is not a live unit. Uh, this is for demo purposes. To, in order to use the USB, we go underneath the uh, door, trap door on the right-hand side, and there's a USB port. When we plug in, we will get a window that pops up. And this window has zero through nine options available for us. Uh, so we'll go down through these one at a time and with an explanation of each. Zero, which is backup history, allows us to, uh, by selecting that option, to back up all the history onto the USB. Number one, load bootloader. So we, uh, when we upgrade a uh, version into the control, we will have to, at times, upgrade the bootloader as well. This is determined by the version, but if we do in fact have to uh, upgrade it, this is where we would uh, get that function or that option. Number two, uh, the CSI. So if we see out to the right hand side, we uh, notice that it says CSI as far as the file name goes. Um, and then the uh, numbering scheme is the version. So CSI would be for a base, basic, I should say, uh, upgrade. The MAI is a step above the BASIC because it includes all of the ED3 files, which are for our generic devices, our case controls, and the, and the like. If we want to save a database, which is the most common option we select on here, we'll go to number four. Load database would be just the opposite. Instead of saving, we're going to load the database, but it's going to have to be a database that exists on that USB. We do need to talk about which database is being selected. Save report. This is where we uh, have a complete comprehensive report in the control of every set point. Uh, everything to deal with the control, including the audit trail, all will be saved in this report. Uh, if you notice, it's in a text format, so we can now take it out. We can put it in our computer, and we can view it in a text format. Refrigeration, similar, except it's very specific to the refrigeration. Then we have the ability to take these uh, a, a specific ED3 file and load it into the control. Uh, ED3 files, one more time, or more uh, associated to case controls, generic type of devices. And in association with that, we have a, a list file. So you can see the device.ls3 list. Um, in order to be able to view that ED3 file, the, the one on number eight, we have to load number nine so that option will show up in the list. So now I'd like to review just a few of these different options on here and uh, so you can see the functionality uh, and then any that are required will go into greater detail so uh, we have a bit good understanding of their operation. I'm going to go to number four, which is to say the database. As I mentioned before, this is the most common used option on here and that is because when people come into the a uh, job site where this is operating, uh, you'll want to save the database. At minimum, before you leave, you should save the database. That way, there's always a backup copy uh, local at the site, uh, and anybody who comes in could plug this in, and uh, at that point, they could go to load database to reinsert the database into the control. Now, there is something that needs to be uh, further detailed here. When I do save database, it gets saved in the control as a date and timestamp. So when we would then possibly go to reload the database, 
that date and time stamp, as you can notice there, that is a date and time stamp. It's uh, in hexadecimal format. We don't, uh, or it's not logical for uh, anybody who doesn't understand hexadecimal, but uh, it is always looking for the most current saved database back here when we use the save option. So it is very important that between these two that we use one USB per controller. We never share them across controllers. Otherwise, uh, this load option could confuse people and they could be loading the incorrect database into uh, any given unit. If I go back here to the save database, I press the OK button just this easily. You'll see that the status will go across showing it's saving the database. and we're done. So such a very quick option. Uh, and then, even though I'm not going to do it, if I would load the database, it would come up and say, hey, here's the database you're going to load. And in fact, is the one that I just saved. And it asks, are you sure? Uh, this is much more time consuming, uh, and it just is a status bar that shows up, so we're not going to run that. Anytime I do not have the window popping up, as simple as pulling the USB out, reinserting, pops up the window one more time. So we can always use the USB by just simply plugging it in and it will pop up the window, but if by chance it doesn't, uh, pop up and or you were uh, moving on to other work and you wanted to come back to it. If you go to the menu button and you see number seven down here, flash drive, it pops that window up as well. So two different ways. You can plug the USB in or you can go to the menu button number seven to get it to uh, appear. All right, so to go over a few of our additional options available on the uh, USB here, we can see number zero says backup history. Uh, I'm going to do this just for the, uh, the fact that we can see the simplicity of it. Uh, complete backup, uh, now that will uh, be dependent on the amount of history that has been saved, but as you can see, it's a very quick report. If I go down to um, refrigeration report, we are as well going to see we're talking a very quick pullback uh, and now we have it available to us on the USB. Now these reports that we just pulled back uh, at a later point we'll put it into the computer and we can see that we can view these reports uh, on our computer. Alright, the last piece of this USB that we want to talk about is going to be for numbers 8 and 9 which is to load an ED3 file and to load the LS3 file. Now, if I have um, generic devices, those could be things such as case controllers, uh, possibly our MCX HVAC controller. We consider them to be our generic family, and they can be visible on this control by an ED3 file. Uh, a good scenario of why I would need to load an ED3 file would be uh, I've got a brand new controller in, and it is newer than the uh, system manager itself. Uh, maybe I'm a year later in needing to put in this new controller. And because of that, we've come out with a new version in this controller, the case controller, for example. And with a new version, we need to be able to uh, select a new ED3 file. Because this control is now a year old, that new file is not going to be sitting in here. And how can I make that happen? I will, number one, take this USB, I'll put it in my computer, and I will load the actual ED3 file that I'm needing onto this USB. And I'm also going to load the device list file on there as well. Both are required inside the control. Any new ED3 requires you get the new uh, device list file as well. Once I have those files and I put them on this USB, I'm obviously going to have to do that from my computer. I will plug it into the system manager. I'll get down here and it's saying, are you sure? And I'm going to say yes and it's telling me which file it is going to load for me and I'm going to allow it to go ahead and do that process. Now when it's done, it's going to say I got to reset the controller, but we know we have a second file to load as well. 
but the process is we first load the ED3 file. When the computer boots back up, I now use the USB. I load the list file. It one more time will reset, but both those options are now in the uh, system manager and available to me. For more information on this topic, see the description below. And for more videos like this, visit our YouTube channel, Danfoss Cool US, and thank you for watching.